Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to wrap up the community ecology lecture here. Um, again, the big picture is looking at how all these different species or populations in a community interact. And if one population or as a population grows or decreases or changes, how that kind of ripple affects the other populations. Everything is connected. There is no single species in any given community that doesn't have multiple connections to other species. And when we're looking at the composition of a community, it is very, very important to identify what we call the keystone species, the species that maintains the diversity within the community. Again, this doesn't have to be a wolf, a bear, a big predator. Take a look at this community. So consider this, this community here. And you define the boundaries of the community. Is it the entire forest? Is it the mountains and the forest and the river and that pond? Depending upon what you use as your definition of community, the, the physical parameters, what species is considered the keystone will change. So simple example, I'm going to define the community as this pond right here that I'm circling. Okay? That is a community, aquatic community. In that pond, the keystone species is going to be the beaver. Because a beaver built that dam, that pile of logs there, that's a beaver dam. If the beaver is not there, the dam is not kept functional. It breaks. If the dam breaks, that pond flows out of the dam. It flows downstream and the pond disappears, and we're back to a shallow stream that's maybe only six, eight inches deep, that's going to change that entire community. There are certain plants living in that pond because they need deep water. They need stable, slow water. They, they can't survive in a, a moving stream. So they're in that pond community. So it's just an example of how the keystone species is the most important species to maintain the diversity. And when we remove them, if we remove them or when we remove them, there are significant consequences to the entire community. It disrupts and sometimes it can destroy the entire stability of the community. So the example I want you guys to look at is Yellowstone National Park. Okay, Yellowstone National Park is one of the gems of the United States. For national parks. Yellowstone always had a diverse community, but then back in the 20s, humans said, we don't like wolves. Get rid of the wolves. Eliminate them. There was a bounty on wolves. They shot them on sight. They would trap wolves. They would poison wolves. They, humans eradicated every wolf out of Yellowstone. There were, there were no residential wolves roughly from 1926 to 1995. And you go, oh, wow, okay, is that a good thing? Well, consider what happened. You get rid of the wolves, the elk population increases. So these animals go, whoo, our population just went up because there's no major predator anymore on us. Sounds like a good thing. Oh, I can go hunt elk easier. There's plenty of elk. We like elks. Wolves are bad. But as their population went up, the producer base decreased. Wolves are, or I'm sorry, elk are very fond of these trees called aspens. They overbrowse the aspens, the willows, the cottonwoods, all of these different plants that grow along the side of streams to stabilize a stream bank. So now the stream started to erode. So if you look over here, notice that exposed bank, that's all eroding because there's no vegetation to hold it in place because the elk ate the vegetation. So now, huh, streams destabilize. Fish habitat declines. Water quality decreases. Bird populations drop. All of these things happen because the wolves were gone. All right, so coyotes, their population jumped up because they don't have that competition anymore from the wolves. So this went on for almost 70 years. Biologists recognized this is a problem. 
through lots of lobbying efforts, lots of conservation work, lots of education, and unfortunately some political fighting, wolves were reintroduced back in the mid-90s. Very controversial. But reintroduction of wolves back in the mid-90s, and the elk population decreased about half, cut in half, because now they have a predator. Now, elk hunters aren't happy because it's harder to get an elk, and that's unfortunate. But let's look at the stability of the ecosystem. You, know, you take out the keystone predator and the elk go up, but the environment starts to get destroyed. Bring the keystone predator back, bring the wolves back, elk drop down, the aspen population, those plants, goes up. Coyotes. Coyotes drop down because now they have a predator or a, um, somebody competing with them. Stream banks get stabilized. Beavers come back and reintroduce, or are not reintroduce, but rebuild their populations, creating ponds and dams, and an entire community starts to stabilize itself again. So Yellowstone has had wolves since the mid-90s, and the populations in the park are again coming back to a greater stability because we reintroduced the keystone species. So the challenge is recognizing the species, which one is the keystone, and trying to make sure we don't negatively impact that particular population. So there's lots of keystones out there. Again, some of them are top-level predators, wolves, bears, Sharks in the ocean are a keystone species. We're decimating shark populations, and we're screwing up the ecological balance of the entire ocean of this planet because of what we're doing with sharks. When we get into conservation biology, we'll talk about sharks and talk about the issue with them and you know, the keystone issue and all that. That's the entire ocean we're messing with because we are... As one species, as humans, we are pushing sharks towards extinction. Lots and lots of shark species are on the endangered species list because of our actions. So what's going to happen to the ocean when we, we wipe out shark species? So community ecology, again, is the big picture of how all the different communities work together, all the different populations within the community interact work together, the dynamics involved in that.